Hi, I'm Ken with Orion Telescopes and Binoculars, and this is the Orion 6-inch um, F12 Classical Cassegrain. A little bit different than your average Schmidt Cassegrain, and I will show you why. We'll go through some of the features and show you why I think this is a nice advantage over some of those other designs and what the benefits are. All right, well, first of all are the optics themselves, 6-inch F12. It's a little bit longer than your average 6-inch F10 uh, Cassegrain or Schmidt Cassegrain. This has an 1,836 millimeter focal length. So nice high magnification, good for lunar and planetary viewing and imaging. And if you're going to be uh, imaging some of the deep sky objects, um, it is F12, so it's a little bit slower than a standard F10, but with the newer CCD cameras, CMOS cameras that are very uh, sensitive, and you stick to some of the brighter, more compact targets like globular clusters, planetary nebula, um, those things actually come through very well with something like this. The biggest advantage over a Schmidt Cassegrain, I'm going to angle this over this way, there's no front corrector plate. That's my least favorite thing about Schmidt Cass is that thing always dews over uh, Im almost immediately if you're out in a kind of a wet environment or if it's a, there's kind of high moisture content in the air. So uh, without a secondary mirror or without a corrector plate, the way they correct the lenses, um, because remember in a Schmidt Cassegrain, the, the corrector plate up front actually has a curve to it. it it's correcting the light before it hits the uh, spherical primary mirror. In a uh, classical Cassegrain, you have a parabolic primary and a hyperbolic secondary mirror. So the corrections are done in the two mirrors themselves. Uh, the mirrors are quartz, so it's a very low uh, thermal expansion substrate, even better than Pyrex. So as the temperature is cooling, the, the mirrors don't flex at all and you get a nice sharp image uh, as the telescope is acclimatizing. Uh, the mirrors are also 96% reflectivity coated, so it's very high light transmission, very high efficiency. Uh, the light coming from the sky to your camera, uh, pretty much almost all of it gets there. So it's a very bright image for a, for a 6 inch of 12. Also, if you look down the front, you'll see a series of baffles. There's one, two, three, I can't quite count them all, but there's a bunch of baffles from the very front all the way down. That's better than your average Schmidt cast, which is usually just um, a smooth, uh, black, flat black painted tube. Uh, the light catches on those baffles so you don't get any light scatter, or very little light scatter at least. Um, so when you're imaging or viewing a target near something bright, or if you're looking at the moon, you'll get very uh, little glare off from the edges. Uh, also, when you're imaging a target and there's a bright star just out of the field of view, it's much less likely to throw uh, light scatter across the field of view. The, the knife edge baffles are, are very nice in that regard. And the last thing I want to mention about the optics before I move on to some of the mechanics, um, the optics are fixed. There is no moving parts between the primary and the secondary mirror, unlike a Mac Cassegrain or Schmidt Cassegrain, where when you focus, the mirror itself is moving back and forth. The advantage of uh, two fixed mirrors is that there's no mirror flop or, or uh, image shift. When you change directions on a movable primary mirror, when you're focusing, the mirror can have a tendency to kind of shift as it moves from one side of the uh, thread to the other on that little rack inside. So. Uh, no image shift with a system like this, uh, and coupled with a very robust focuser on the back, uh, gives you very low flex and, and, again, no image shift. All right, well, let's talk about some of the uh, features of the mechanics, uh, starting with the focuser. That's probably my favorite part of this scope. It's a very robust focuser on the back. Uh, it's got a 10-to-1 uh, reduction gear on it, so you got coarse focus here, and then on the back side here, there's a fine focus knob, 10-to-1. So getting critical focus uh, is much easier with a system like this, um, especially at the high power at uh, 1800 plus a millimeter focal length. Uh, it's a very small uh, space between focused and not focused, so having the, the dual speed there really helps. There's a very large amount of back focus with a telescope like this. The, the, the light focus is very far back this way. Uh, so you can attach pretty much any accessory and still reach focus from an eyepiece and a diagonal. Uh, you can put a two-inch diagonal on this and a, and a low-power eyepiece, uh, all the way to a CMOS CCD camera, maybe a monochrome camera with a filter wheel, uh, with an adaptive optic system, maybe with an off-axis guide, or wh whatever combination of imaging train you want to put back there, it will reach focus. To do that, we give you some extension root tubes. So the, the focuser itself has a range here, but if you needed to go further back, you unthread the focuser and then thread on any number of combination of uh, uh, extension rings uh, to go along with it. We include two one-inch extension rings and a two-inch extension ring. So you can get very uh, close to the furthest back focus uh, using a combination of those rings. 
for finder scopes, you've got a range of um, uh, possibilities. Uh, you can see here there's one finder bracket attached. I actually uh, didn't install the other one, but when you get your scope at home, you'll have two of these finder brackets, one on each side of the top center. So you can put one, uh, say a 9 by 50 finder here, and then if you're imaging, you can put uh, another uh, guide scope using the finder bracket on this side. So you have the best of both worlds. You don't have to swap from a finder scope to a guide scope and back and forth, have them both on there at the same time. And then the last thing I wanted to mention is the weight. This scope is 12 pounds, so it's nice and lightweight and fits on a range of scopes. Right now I've got it on our Sirius mount, which would probably be my recommendation. Uh, basically any mount that holds uh, at least 12 pounds and maybe a little bit more if you're going to be imaging. And also uses the uh, Vixen rail system. So on the bottom you've got this Vixen rail. Any mount from our uh, Skyview Pro, which holds 20 pounds, the Sirius mount holds 30 pounds, Atlas. 40 pounds, you have your uh, uh, plenty of mounts to choose from. Just total up the, uh, the weight of all of your accessories that you're going to be putting on. So if you have a heavy camera and a guide scope and filter wheel and whatever else, add that to the 12 pounds of the scope and then decide what size mount you need. All right, well, there you have it. This is a scope designed for high power lunar planetary viewing for imaging and then even for some deep sky imaging of some of the more compact uh, brighter targets out there in the deep sky. This is the Orion 6-inch F12 classical Cassegrain. Thank you very much. Clear skies.